get to the sample area, you simply raise the lid. Here we have a clamp with a quick release knob. You want to press the button and hold and slide off the clamp lid. The nice thing about the clamp is that it can accommodate a variety of different sample containers from 50 milliliter tubes to tighter plates to larger jars and small vials. So this is a nice thing about that. You can vary your type of sample preparation based on container size. The fruit that I have prepared here is already pre-chopped. Here's the strawberries here, they're already pre-chopped. The method for the AOAC method requires 15 grams of sample and 50 milliliters of acetonitrile. So here I have acetonitrile pre-weighed out. So I'm simply going to add the 15 mils of acetonitrile to the 15 grams of sample. We also highly recommend the ceramic cylinders, which are angular shaped or wedge. It does a great job of homogenizing the sample. So we wanna add two cylinders to the tubes. In some cases, you can add three based on whatever fruit you're trying to do. We wanna close that off. Now we wanna add our sample tubes. I prepared the apple and the kiwi ahead of time. So now we wanna add our sample tubes to the Geno grinder. Here we have a foam holder, which can hold 16 50 milliliter tubes. We simply take the foam holder, slide it over the threaded rod down to the base. Since we're only running three samples, we wanna place each sample in a corner of the holder in order to balance the clamp. We can use an empty tube as a placeholder. And if you had more samples, basically what you want to do, you want to balance the left side with the right side in order to keep the threaded rod from being damaged. We simply hold and depress the quick release button. We slide the clamp lid onto the rod, down to the top. We give a few turns to secure. Then we close the lid. Since the Geno Grinder screen is now up, I know it's hard for you to see, but just try to bear with me. On a display, we have the control panel, save protocol, and also the resources screen. So what we wanna do, we wanna go to the control panel. The control panel allows us to set the runtime the speed, the number of cycles, and the rest in between these cycles. At this point, we can store the protocol, we can name it, you can do a lot of things with the, uh, the touch screen. Here, we're gonna set the runtime for one minute with the rate of 1500 strokes per minute. No rest time, only one cycle. We simply press run. With respect to time, we're not going to complete the full cycle, and the unit does make some noise that may interfere with you guys listening to what I'm trying to say. But what I've done, I've prepared samples ahead of time. So simply to remove the samples after the run is complete. In this case, we use one minute to process strawberries, apples, and kiwi. If you're working with other fruit that may be a little more fibrous or vegetables that may be a little more difficult to grind, you can increase the runtime in order that you can pull more of the pesticide extractions out of the fruit. So to remove the samples, simply give the knob a few turns. You wanna depress the quick release button, slide the clamp lid off. 
after samples have been homogenized in the genome grinder, you want to place them in a centrifuge. The centrifuge is designed to separate the solid phase layer from the liquid layer. So we simply add the tubes to the centrifuge, close the lid. We want to set the speed to 3,500 RPMs and the time for three minutes. And then we simply press start. After the centrifuge has went through its process, you open up the lid. Here I prepared samples to show what the results will look like after the sample has been centrifuged. So clearly you can see that the solid layer has been separated from the liquid layer. The liquid layer is the organic layer that will contain the pesticides. So afterwards, we want to include what we call a cleanup step. The cleanup step is adding a salt matrix that will remove the water and undesired co-extracts. The salt matrix that we're going to add is going to be six grams of magnesium sulfate and 1.5 grams of sodium acetate. In most kits, they may include activated carbon, a small amount. The activated carbon is used to remove pigments such as chlorophyll that may interfere with the analysis step. So at this point, I've already extracted eight milliliters, which, call, which the method calls for, eight milliliters from the organic phase. If possible, it's best to use an Eppendorf to remove the liquid so you do not disturb the solid layer. Other than that, if you're very careful, you can pour it out. So here I have it, the liquid layer I've extracted, and I have the salt matrix already in a 15 milliliter tube. So we're gonna simply Add the liquid. We're gonna cap off, give it a little shake. And at this point, I prepared the other samples. Oops. I prepared the other samples with the extract. So we want to place this back into the Geno grinder for a simple agitation. Here we have a foam holder for 15 milliliter tubes. We simply slide this onto the threaded rod, place this in the clamp. As before, since we have a limited amount of samples, we want to place the samples in the corners. We use a blank as a placeholder. We want to apply the lid, slide down, give a few turns to secure, close the lid. We'll set the runtime again for one minute at 1500 strokes per minute. Simply press run. Let the unit do the work. And we can imagine that the unit went through the full process just for respect of time. After the run is complete, we simply lift the lid. Press and hold the quick release knob. Slide the lid off. And at this point, we also want to centrifuge the samples to just further separate the solid layer from the liquid layer. So we'll place the 15 milliliter tubes inside the centrifuge. We 
we use a blank as a placeholder just to keep everything balanced. Close the centrifuge lid. We're going to set the speed for 3,500 RPMs with a one minute runtime. Simply press the start button. After the centrifuge has went through its process, you press the stop button to open the lid and you remove the samples. So here I have a sample that has already been prepared in centrifuge. So here we have the strawberries here and you can see how the solid layer has been separated further from the liquid layer. At this point, we want to extract the liquid layer for analysis by GCMS or LCMS. Depending on which method you use, you may need to dilute the sample based on the concentration of the pesticides that may be in the sample. Uh, one thing I wanted, uh, forgot to mention is that typically the tubes that come with the uh, catcher's kit, they're made of polypropylene or polyethylene. These two materials are chemically compatible with acetonitrile. So you want to keep that in mind that when you, if you do purchase kits, whether from Serta Prep or abroad, you want to make sure that the tubes are chemically compatible with acetonitrile. So this concludes the brief demonstration of showing how the Geno Grinder can be re can be used to replace the manual handshaking method that is used in the catcher's um, method, as we have seen. Um, at this point, I do want to mention that this is our smaller homogenizer, which we call the 1600 Mini G. The 1600 Mini G is very similar to the Geno Grinder, except the sample throughput is a lot smaller. So, for example, In the Geno Grinder, you can run 16 of 50 milliliter tubes in a Geno Grinder. In the Mini G, you can only run six. The speed and time parameters can be set just as the Geno Grinder. The difference is the Mini G has a much simpler control panel, no touch screen, where you can only set the time and the rate. It's simply turned on from the back. The system starts to warm up and you can easily prepare your samples. We have foam holders that is also available for the Mini G as well as the Geno Grinder. The Mini G can also run different types of samples. So if you're looking to run tighter plates, two mil vials, jars of different sizes, the adjustable clamp can easily accommodate the different sizes. So this concludes the uh, brief demonstration of the catcher's method, just showing that how things can be completed in three simple steps, from the agitation step, to the cleanup step, to the final analysis step.